Hi there, I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. I work and create out of our home here in Northeast Ohio in a large, messy, light filled studio. Encaustic literally means to burn in. So I paint with a torch and hot beeswax mixed with a tree sap. And well, pretty much anything else I can get my hands on. When I'm not in the studio, I'm out exploring nature with my husband, Matt. Thanks so very much for being here. Consider subscribing and join this artsy community. Don't forget, hit that thumbs up button, which helps me get introduced to more like-minded people like yourself. Good morning. I have been recording bits and pieces over the last week. And so this is kind of a bit of a mashup as to what's been happening. So here we have a bunch of different encaustic wax paints that need put away. I have them in these containers here and I wasn't getting them out because they weren't with the rest of my paints. So I printed off some labels and of course <laughs> made some more plastic bags to store them in. And I'm just going to peel these labels off and get them put away into their appropriate bins. And by the way, these plastic bins are still working out really, really well. So um, if you're an encaustic artist and are searching for a storage for your encaustic paint, these plastic bins are great. <music> to spend every waking moment up in the studio. Of course, there is some life stuff that I have to deal with, including laundry. But the good news is these laundry baskets are now empty, and I am literally doing a happy dance over it. Spring has also begun to sprung here in Northeast Ohio and the snow and icicles are all starting to melt, but this tree was just gorgeous to me. We took a little walk around the neighborhood, went down into the woods, and um, like I said, it's just getting some beautiful spring magic, including some buds coming out on the trees. So um, spring is just around the corner here. You may not know, but I am part Scottish, and my sister and I are always trying to find the perfect shortbread cookies. Allie from This Little Wonderful Life, I will put her link down below, shared a shortbread recipe, and I had to try it, and I have to say, it was quite delicious. Getting back up into the studio now, and today is going to be one of those short days in the studio, but I wanted to make sure I got up here just for a little bit. So I'm going to clean off the griddle because I've left it a complete mess. And this way it'll be ready for the next time I can get up here and paint. So it'll be all nicely cleaned off. By the way, this rubber catalyst works wonderfully. Um, it doesn't scratch the griddle at all. And as you can see, it really scrapes away or rather scrapes off all of that melted wax beautifully and does not leave a trace behind. So um, I think it's a number five. If I remember, I will try to link it down below in the description.
just thought I'd show you what my plan is for this journal and this journal. And we'll start with the small one first because I've been working in it. Okay, so I'm going to flip through this little mini sketchbook and you can see it's small. But I wanted to let you know, I was introduced to another encaustic artist. Her name is Skylar McKee. And I will try to remember to put that her information down below in the description box. But on her Instagram account, she has a hashtag and it's hashtag show up and make marks. And um, I thought it was really interesting because she had said how she doesn't like to draw and but it's, she still feels important to ha keep a sketchbook, keep a sketchbook practice. And I could so relate to this because I also don't really like to draw. And that's kind of strange to say as an artist. But basically her whole point of the hashtag was to just do 10 minutes or so in your sketchbook and just don't have any expectations with it. And that's what I'm going to use this sketchbook for. Um, so I, like I said, I don't really like to draw. So these are going to be just kind of messy, unfinished, show up and make marks type of thing. Though, So thank you to Skylar McGee. And I'm hoping maybe some of you can also relate to that where maybe you don't like to draw or maybe like myself, you've been told in the past that you can't draw and um, that kind of leaves an impression on you, especially if you were told that in elementary school. So at any rate, um, just a quick flip through and some of these, I'm not sure if you can see some of these, but some of these I covered up and these were actually this fish and I think I have, um, yeah, here's a seahorse, uh, sharks and whales. These were actually a zine that I put together way back from years ago. So this is a rather old sketchbook, but I'm just going to kind of make it a place. This is a really old drawing as well, where I can just come in and play. I'm probably not going to do a bunch on uh, camera with this. This were notes from um, a Christmas project I was working on. I don't know if you can see underneath that very well, but you can see it just it's random stuff in here and I've covered over a lot of this with encaustic paint these were just a couple collage pieces I was working on but um, I think you get the idea um, these were another um, thing I was working on another uh, painting but these all kind of lead into then um, the finished paintings and it's really just all about getting something down in the sketchbook, kind of warming your hands up and showing up for your art. So um, I just kind of, this was a more recent one, Some kind of trees and roots. Um, this was one that I did for a paint through your view series. I was doing a lighthouse and just kind of sketched out a quick lighthouse there. And then I also have a bunch of blank pages, but you can also see I don't go in any set order, um, which may drive some of you crazy, but um, it's what works for me. I just kind of flip to a random page and like, oh yeah, I'm going to work on this today. So at any rate, that is this tiny sketchbook and I hope it encourages you to get out and just make some marks. I also wanted to show you that when I have leftover paint, so this was leftover watercolor paint. I did this super quick and easy watercolor background using a couple different of the core watercolors and um, nothing fancy, nothing special. So I didn't record that either, but I had leftover paint. So I just take the the tin of leftover paint and dump it into this sketchbook and you can see the pages really fold up there because they are really really thin pages but um, it doesn't bother me it's a sketchbook and uh, just a place to um, dump a leftover paste or paint <laughs> not paste leftover paint so I'm not wasting anything and then a place to experiment around and just show up and make marks. 
All right, and then there's this big, huge sketchbook. And in this sketchbook, I have just um, different random drawings that I've done up front. And then you've seen me flip through this before. Lots of, um, again, things from past and future. But my plan for this big sketchbook was to, just reach over here, glue in these sketches that I have done for this new painting series. And I think that's still a good idea, but I'm kind of debating on maybe scanning these first and maybe someday making prints out of them. I don't know, it's just um, kind of a random idea that I had. So um, let me know if you guys would be interested in prints. I'm not exactly sure how I could get that to work, but if you would be, um, you know, I would be willing to kind of maybe try to figure that out. So again, I may still take in to a, oh, this already has something glued down in it, um, you know, I may still take and glue these sketches down in here on these um, pages here. But the problem with doing that is that this is getting really thick. And I think the more I glue these down, I'm not sure how well it's going to hold up. I don't know yet. So um, anyways, there's my ramblings and kind of what's been going on in my uh, sketchbook world. Good morning. You are now all caught up to present day time. And today my plan is to work on another encaustic sketch. And that orange watercolor background that you saw earlier with the mini little tiny sketchbook, I am going to be working on that. And I've actually already put down the image and the several layers of encaustic medium. So um, let's get to painting on that.
So I know I've talked in the past about mixing colors on my palette here or the griddle. And so you guys probably know a little bit about that and how I mix the colors on the griddle. But lately I've been doing these paint swatch cards to go with each painting. And so I thought I'd show you how I do that. And basically that little tin in the back there that you saw me dip my brush into, that is some brush cleaner, which is uh, soy wax. So anyways, I'm just, just swatching out some of these colors under the card and then I'll go back in and write the names of them. And then I'm also mixing right on the palette and doing a swatch of those two colors mixed. And um, I do this for a couple reasons. One, I like to practice mixing the colors. I think it's important to know um, color mixing and I wanna try to get better at that in the future. So kind of a goal of mine. And then the other reason is if I ever go back to repaint this sketch onto a bigger panel, I know all of the colors I used and I don't have to guess. And you'll see sometimes I take and use the brush cleaner to clean out my brushes. And then sometimes I just use some clear encaustic medium, just depending on how what color I'm going into next. So in this case, I'm using blues and purples and they're not that far off or that far different, I should say. So I'm just gonna be using the clear encaustic medium to clean it off and just wiping it onto a paper towel. So at any rate, gonna just continue on here mixing the colors and you'll see I add some clear encaustic medium to some of the encaustic paint. And again, that just depends on the paint. Some of these paints I've made myself using dried pigments and some of these like that purple is a store-bought paint from the art store. And so when you buy your paint from the art store, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a lot, lot, lot more concentrated. So you can really kind of um, stretch that color out by adding clear encaustic medium to it. So in here again, you just see me mixing that purple and blue color. And um, yeah, I'll just kind of sit back here and let you watch this color swatching process. And I am ending the day and this video basically the same way I started it by cleaning off the palette. All right, I think this is where I'm gonna leave you for the day. I'm gonna flip the camera around and get you a couple close ups of this sketch. All right, here is the finished sketch. And like I said, I'll get you a couple close ups here. I think there's a few things that I might do differently if I choose to paint a larger version of this, but for the most part, I like it. I really, really love the colors on this one. So, um, and a couple, the camera would focus there. There it goes. Close-ups of that encaustic writer and the texture here. So yeah, there you have it. I believe this sketch is done. If you have any questions at all about anything in the video, definitely leave them down below in the comment section. And if you would be interested in prints of any of these sketches, also let me know that I'm just trying to decide what I wanna do with them. I'm also toying around with the idea of maybe putting them in a frame of some sort and just selling the original sketch. I don't know, I've got some ideas going around in my head, so let me know down below. While you're down there, don't forget to like the video. As always, thanks so very, very, very much for coming along. We'll talk to you soon. 
Bye for now. Thank you.